Hi everyone, it's Lazy Fire, and welcome to the Hate the Player podcast. I have Arnold and Three Toes with me as no, well. No, no. Yay! All right, and um, we are actually now in a next generation world. Believe it or not, this is the first podcast we've recorded since both the PlayStation Four and Xbox One have launched, and uh, they've had varying degrees of success on that launch. But we can talk about that later, uh, Arnold. You were telling me before we started this, like literally three seconds ago, that you've been playing a bit of Binding of Isaac lately. Yeah, yeah. It's um, for those that don't know, it's a uh, it's been out for a while. I actually picked Couple it up years. on a Steam sale. Uh, big surprise. And um, <laughs> there's if there's two things Arnold's um, obviously in, it's Steam sales and bondage. Apparently. Yes. Yes. I mean, it really hit on hit on all of my uh, all of my uh, well. Yeah, I don't want to get weird this early on, but um, <laughs> could have been, you could have gone with the the biblical reference there, which yeah, the yeah, I didn't yeah. know to go like the, it, it, with the biblical reference or or a uh, or a reference about my G spot or you know, it, it, I mean, like I said, I just I was unsure of how weird to get this early yeah. on, but um, if you've ever played the Legend of Zelda, it's a um, isometric two dimensional uh, dungeon crawler, and uh, it, it's great. It really it's it's all uh, in flash, so it, it has that flash style to it, and uh, yeah. Yeah. it's a roguelike. Um, so so I mean it's got procedural content, um, and it's got like two two hundred different uh, items you can pick up. And on average, uh, through a game, if you end up beating it, you'll pick up maybe twenty items. Um, so it's pretty. I mean, so what? That's a one in ten that you'll see something that you saw in the past few games. Um, it, it's it's great. The enemies are varied. Uh, dungeons, like I said, pr- procedurally uh, generated, like any any roguelike, uh, and it's got a great nostalgic feel to it. Um, it's not. I believe they're actually remaking it for the uh, new consoles, uh, and it's going to be called the Binding of Isaac. Uh, like returned or something like that. Uh, I just looked up as uh, rebirth. Yeah, rebirth, yeah. and uh, and it's going to be in 16-bit like Super Nintendo graphics, <laughs> which I I think would really only make it better, um, <laughs> because uh, I, I like like we touched on last week. I think uh, the those 16-bit graphics have aged really well. Yeah, I mean, it, it, because I think because they were the pinnacle of that that style. You know, and I think um, that the 3D games from like maybe the 360 on will age pretty well, also. Um, just because, you, I mean, they, it's getting to the point where they've really got 3D games down. You know, it, it's 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 like that. So, um, but going back to the Binding of Isaac, it, it's really, it, I think it'd be it's one of those games that would be better with a, a gamepad because you move around with WASD and you. You can only aim uh, up, down, left, right. There's no diagonal. When now, if you're moving up, it'll slant up or slant down, but um, it's not a not like a 45 degree or 90 degree or you know, no 45 degree angle or anything like that. It, so it, it's challenging. It, it takes a little getting used to. I really didn't like it at first, but um, it really it's an enjoyable game. And if you like The Legend of Zelda. Or, or I mean, I'm talking about the Super Nintendo ones, like the old ones, or the Game Boy Advance, or Game Boy ones. Um, you should really pick it up. I think it's only a few bucks. It's it's really inexpensive, and it's uh, got a lot of re- replayability. Yeah, I, I actually did jump into it. Whoa, a little bit sorry. of feedback there. Sorry, sorry. I did. Yeah, I did jump into it a little bit after I picked it up during the summer sale, and. Uh, that was right when I had to RMA my, my graphics card, so I didn't really get a lot of time with it before I did that, and then when I got it back, I had other things to do with it. So I never really picked it back up, and uh, I kind of wanted to do that sometimes, but I'm still, like, I will still, when I go into Steam, or I have a few minutes, I'll go, I, I could do a couple runs in Rogue Legacy before I have to go anywhere, or something like that, instead of starting to play Binding of Isaac. Yeah, yeah, and so. I think that's really one of the... Uh one of the bullet points for games like that. It's not something you sit down, oh, you've got to play the like a, like a battlefield match where oh, hey, you got to invest half an hour or or a, like an RPG where you can just poop sock for a couple weeks. I mean, 
it, it's you can play a match and it or and you'll be done in like 20 minutes yeah yeah i mean if that because you could get a shitty roll in your first right, couple levels right you could get no keys you could have no bombs oh you're god just yeah completely fucked yeah um but i mean there are different starting characters too that start with different things and as you uh unlock stuff um, there are a few permanent type unlocks, but it, it, not many. So it really is dependent on what kind of role you get, and uh, I think that's part of the part of the charm of it, really. Oh yeah, definitely. It's the the structure of the game. Uh, if you've not played it, three toes, you haven't not played Binding of Isaac, right? No, I, no, I've not, I've never played it. I don't know I, what the system requirements are, and I don't think it's. I really don't think it's high at all. Yeah, no, since it's on Mac OS X, I'm have to. Uh, check it out you really should it's really worth it i mean you get a couple you can do a run in maybe 10 minutes and be totally fine right maybe 20 minutes on the outside if you want to get to the end of the game but it's you know there's a bunch of bosses there's a bunch of levels and there's it's uh it's sort of like a tile hey jake can you shut the shut the door for me right you've got these different paths you can go to secret rooms all this other stuff uh it's really neat it's you know you can take a look on youtube a lot of people have done videos there with uh this stuff one guy has about 800 of them and that's kind of neat uh, like crazy but it's one of those games that you could play for you could you could do 800 runs through it and never see the same exact stuff twice see and and that's what i really liked about uh spelunky when i got into that um last month first time i played it how you know every time he fired it up uh the levels are just completely different and you never knew, you know, what you were going to get. You may, you know, you may have a good run to where you, you beat the game within like 20 minutes because all the levels you run into are real easy. And then next time you fire it up, you may die, like completely die on the first level. Yeah, that's it's always a concern. No, but I I think that's really one of the enjoyable things with roguelikes, just because. I don't want to go on a tear about the sissification of uh, of games or anything like that, or how much easier games seem to be than they were back in the like when we were growing up. But um, yeah, roguelikes can be hard and yeah. and punishing, but at the same time, um, they're more rewarding. And I think that's really uh, one of the one of the things that make it make this and other games like it great. Yeah, well, you know, speaking to games that we played growing up, I actually bought and started playing Red Faction, uh, like, last week. Yeah, 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 you'd mentioned that. And it's, I forgot how hard it is. And that just reminded me how easy shooters are now. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, you go through, like, the Battlefield uh, 4 campaign, I busted through that thing in maybe five hours. Oh, on a hard, it was still ridiculously easy. Yeah, it was just like, it, there was no, it was processed. It, it, that's all it can be. It's like you go, you just go through this thing and it's just, dit, 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 done. The game's over before you even knew it was started. Like, the the finale scene in Battlefield 4 felt like the middle of a game for anything else. And yeah. the, playing Red Faction, uh, it's just, that game is ridiculously hard. I don't, I don't understand how I thought that was a great game when I was a kid. Uh, or well, not a kid, but you know, high schooler. Uh, when the PlayStation Two came out, and that was like one of the first, uh, like big first-person shooters that came out. And it was how the hell did I think this was awesome? This thing, <laughs> it's it's incredibly difficult. It's really like some of the the stuff you have to do is incredibly obscure. But that's you know that's the change that games have made over the years. Is that there's this there are two things that have changed. Is one uh, tutorial missions. They're in every single game by default. And then, two, uh, it's just, like, this process of making sure that people can finish your game. They don't want you to, like, throw the controller down, like, fuck this game! Which is something that they did not worry about back when Red Faction was made. Or, or and, you know, Binding of Isaac and, uh, Rogue Legacy and these other games are kind of the same way. It's They and do not care if you finish their game. They want you to play it and right. keep playing it. Right, and, and I think the uh, the reason that that changed so much is it, it, it kind of lines up with the growth of the industry. Oh, yeah, um, if you have a game that's really hard, not a lot of people are going to play it. You know, 
Yeah. Um, so there really is a lot of motivation uh, to make a game uh, easy so you can get more people to enjoy it, which is ultimately what the game is about. Um, and then you have Spurgs like us who who uh, lament it and uh, <laughs> want to go back to the day of uh, the slot couch slapping or uh, throwing <laughs> controllers into your television. I, well, during... I, uh, no, it's, speak to that. I, I have to tell a funny story. During one of the the uh, mid-game boss fights in Red Faction, where the game starts getting ridiculously hard, you have to auto-save, or you have to uh, quick-save every time you kill a guy to make sure you don't die in the next encounter. Like, that's how bad the game gets towards the middle section of the game. And uh, I actually got so angry, I punched my hand into my open... or my, my fist into my open hand because I didn't want to, like, hit anything nice or throw <laughs> my mouse. And uh, I had to stop playing for a while because I hurt my hand. Yeah, if you're <laughs> if you're resorting to self-mutilation, the game's pretty, pretty difficult. Yep. Yeah, uh, but, I mean, it's weird that that's kind of coming back, not only with a lot of these indie games and uh, smaller studio stuff that, you know, like we're saying, Binding of Isaac was like a two-man team, or, or a man and a woman who did that game entirely, I think. Or Super Meat Boy was a two-man team. and uh, Well, actually, one of the guys from Super Meat Boy was the one who did all the stuff for Binding of Isaac. Uh, but, I was yeah, about to say, I looked at the artwork. Super Meat Boy references in there. Yeah, yeah the yeah, art looks you can actually, really uh, similar. Spoiler alert, you can actually turn into them. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, those, those games are difficult and they're built to be difficult and of course the uh, the souls games dark souls and demon souls that are built to be difficult and they found a, an audience with that stuff which and is I think great it's, what which is great yeah yeah uh it, it, if you haven't played those arnold or well three toes you have a 360 still uh they're probably cheap now uh the dark souls anyways is probably cheap now Pick it up. Uh, it's on Steam sale pretty often. You can get it for less than $8. And uh, if you know what to do in terms of mods and everything, you can get that running pretty well on pretty much any build. But it's mm. just, like, it's a hard game, but it's fun, and you yeah. learn as you go, and you figure out how to do things, and you might Definitely. have to, you know, you'll die a ton, a ton of times, but it's totally fine. See, and that's that's what I miss. Like, if you if you look back at the games, like the classic, you know, quote-unquote, Nintendo hard games, like Mega Man 2 is the one that always pops in my oh, mind. Half, yeah. so half, half the fun was figuring out, you know, like, what, what weapons do I need to use against which boss? And yeah, I mean, grand, the levels weren't randomly gener- generated. You had to to learn patterns of enemies, like when what guys were going to show up, what you need to do to dodge your shots and take them out. Like, it's I really I I really do miss that stuff. And Battle Toads, yeah. like as as oh, <laughs> as mind numbingly uh, difficult as that game was. Like I hate Battle Toads. Everyone like, hates Battle Toads. You said that you like say that, and like my eye twitched just <laughs> out of, just from memories the, of how upset I was as a child at that game. The goddamn uh, hover pod levels. Oh, uh, duh, duh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the hover pod! That thing, yeah, that that section kind of sucked. Uh, but there is there is a full let's play of Battle Toads out there if you want to see how that goes. Yeah, had you yeah, and then uh, for yourself. the five hundred deaths on the hover pods. <laughs> oh. Yeah, no, no checkpoints there. <laughs> no, no, didn't have auto save. Didn't have oh, quick saves. You just died a bunch and then restarted. <sighs> yep. I made it through twice. Really? And then died on that level. Died, like, first thing in that level. Because after that, the game gets harder, too. Like, the actual game. And, huh. yeah, it sucks. I just, like, eight-year-old me hates that game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Do you ever play Battletoads and Double Dragons? No, well, Double Dragons was great. Oh, yeah, I love like Double Dragons. There is a game called Battletoad and Double Dragon. Oh shit! Yeah, I remember that game. I um, vaguely yeah, remember I don't that. think I played it though. I, well, or maybe I rented it. I, I remember the game. That was the Battletoads game I actually owned. Hmm. Uh, I don't know how we came across it. I don't know why we had it in our house. I don't remember my parents buying it, but we had that game, and I played the fuck out of that game. But only the first level because you could, uh, if you and, well, in my case, my brother. Uh, time things right, you could kick a guy back and forth between two walls forever. 
and we just <laughs> did that for like hours because we were dumb children. Yeah, yeah, that's the story a... of my life. <laughs> um, yeah, my uh, my kids actually sat and watched Nyan Cat for literally an hour. Oh fuck those kids! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are you even here? I don't yeah. need you, kids. Hey, hey, kids, kids are kids are weird, man. Yeah. <laughs> Um, that's that's why you don't have kids. I don't know why you fucked that up so hard, but you can't listen to me. <laughs> Go back in time and take my advice. <laughs> <laughs> Coming from the guy with no children, this is. <laughs> oh man, uh, they're they're worth it, and they they honestly they give you a, a ton of uh, interesting stories. I don't know. I I come across enough interesting stories in my own life. <laughs> The only thing that I my uh, my fiance babysat for my niece and nephew, who are actually her niece and nephew, but I just refer to him that way. Uh, and I came home and they were there, so I picked up my five-year-old nephew by his ankle because I can, and started walking him to closer to the cat, who, uh, unbeknownst to me, had hissed at him and swung at him a couple oh. times that day. <laughs> I thought he loved that cat, and he's just yelling, No! Get it away! <laughs> I thought... Well, see, that's part of the fun of children, too. Yeah. What that time to grow up, boy! Yeah. <laughs> His parents wouldn't like it if I did that. <laughs> but, I mean, that's that's the limits of contact I want to have with children is... They are there when I come home, and by the time I'm finished walking the dog, they are gone. Fantastic. It was um, real nice to have those kids for those five minutes. <laughs> this show um, brought go- to you by vasectomies. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah. Going, going back to uh, the, the whole roguelike thing, um, I, I really think that with roguelikes being so difficult, uh, it, it's okay for them to have a smaller audience, or I mean, it, not because they're roguelikes, but because they're only like these one, two-man teams, and um, they have a much lower threshold to be profitable. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely true. They're not going to appeal to the wider audience. That, but they don't have to. Yeah, they, they uh, definitely. That's that's the big thing. They can go out and hit that niche. But the, the thing is, a game like uh, Super Meat Boy or... Uh, Binding of Isaac, FTL, these other games that are really session-based, they don't focus on having a huge audience, they can still do really good work, get a studio on the on the map, and uh, yeah. start... Yeah, Binding of Isaac sold 2 million units. Oh yeah, definitely. Oh wow. It, it, it's I wouldn't doubt that for a second. It's just such a... It's a fun game, and if you get really good at it, it's a lot of fun. But yeah. learning it is part of the fun in it. Yeah, so. definitely, definitely. Like I so, said, yes, I really didn't like it at first, and then I went back and tried it again, and uh, yeah, it was great. Yeah, it's, I don't know, it's its one of those games where if people ask me, hey, what should I get on my PC, and I've only got like 15 bucks, uh, Binding of Isaac or Rogue Legacy, those you'll get so much out of those two games alone, that they're worth it. Yeah, Rogue Legacy is, is great. I still need to go back through and uh, actually finish it. Yeah, I've never finished it. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm like, I've got, like, the whole castle unlocked, basically, and I, I don't know, I just, I, Steam, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Steam will do that to you. But that's, well, that's the beauty of Steam, I guess, is that it gives you so many options that you can't finish games. Yeah, yeah, no, I've got the, I got the whole Hitman series for, like, under ten bucks. Oh my go god, I that. played so much of that when it first came out. Yeah. Hitman 2, man. Oh yeah, yeah I've got um, Surgeon Simulator 2013, which I really didn't like at first, but then uh, it's starting to grow on me. Oh. Um, that, that, that is a game um, where all you, all you have is a hand. Uh-huh. And, and you five, like uh, A-S, or A-W-E-R-T controls uh control or no a w e r f or something like that controls your pinky ring finger middle finger pointer finger and thumb uh to cl- to grasp things and you have to <laughs> like do heart wow. heart transplants and right you and, move uh, you move it around with the mouse left click to right, lower right. the hand you can rotate your hand yeah. and it, it's one of those things that are that are 
easy to learn, but really, really difficult to master. You basically end up uh, mutilating your patient, which there, I mean, is, is there the are hilarious let's plays of it around. It's yeah. it's really really fun. Yeah, PewDiePie did a uh, yeah. Did don't one watch that, that one. Made me want to yeah. No, made me want to die. There is yeah. a Rooster Teeth uh, did one as well. That's actually kind of worth it because. It's short, it just cuts out some things, and it's one guy playing and the other guy yelling at him how bad he is. <laughs> which, which I mean, that's, that's the joy, and that's the thing that my kids miss from video games. The, yeah. uh, I, back I, when I was a kid, when I was young, there, there, it was me and my friend sitting on the couch, he'd be playing, and I'd tell him that he was shit. <laughs> yeah, they need, they need you, or not you, but rather and now, now when I do there, it, now when I do it, it's child abuse to tell them they suck. Lazy, I know, I know you're not a huge fan of Generic B, but he actually had a, a let's play of of Surgeon Simulator, and he had two episodes where he got his dad and his mom to play it, and he's sitting there trying to tell them how to play. <laughs> it's it's pretty hilarious. Oh God, yeah, I would. Hate to see that. Actually, <laughs> I've I, I've uh, I've also been playing through uh, Fallout New Vegas again with a ton of mods installed. And uh, for anybody who hasn't picked that up, that I mean, just get it. It's great. Yeah. It, it basically, it, Fallout's one of those rare franchises that everything that the Fallout name is on is great, with the exception, I think, of Tactics. But I I never played that. I did play Tactics. Uh, I got through about a quarter of it uh and actually it was kind of fun uh it, it's it's a for those of you who don't know it's basically just the combat from the fallout games but done XCOM style and you have a team of people trying to take out a town or something like that uh but it's actually pretty interesting and i wouldn't say it's great or even like amazing or a must play game if you love fallout but it's fun for what it is and for the time I think uh, it was definitely great because there weren't too many of those XCOM style games coming out hmm. Hmm. but uh, it's Fallout's one of those games that the universe r- is really what makes it great I, I really really enjoy everything about the Fallout universe I mean and just the freedom you have in every game to just slaughter everyone <laughs> Or help, or you know, just you, you have a lot of different options. Oh, my favorite thing in Fallout 2 was when you first go to uh, what was it? Reno, I think, was in that game. Was one yeah, of the new first Reno. Times. You go in there, and if you put a live grenade in your inventory and walk past the kids that try to uh, pickpocket you in front of the casino. They would end up pickpocketing the live grenade about a hundred percent of the time, somewhere in that region, <laughs> and just explode after you walk past. Them. Yep, no invincible kids in this one. Yeah, <laughs> Jesus, that that game was uh, that that's a brutal series. But Fallout Two was great because you could go get power armor within the first uh, twenty minutes of the game starting. Yeah, just yeah. Actually, if it took you more than that, you kind of suck. But yeah, I mean, yeah. There's a lot of fun and in the Fallout low, universe. Low intelligent or low intelligence uh, runs, which were actually hilarious. Have you seen? There's a screenshot. Jeez, I'm gonna keep doing this. There's a screenshot LP of a guy doing a one intelligence run with uh, ten strength, <laughs> where he's just his name's like Gork or something like that. Oh, I've punches, seen that. He just punches everything, and he had some. <laughs> He had some sort of he had a couple mods going that allowed him to level up past 100 and then it also allowed him to uh extend the game forever instead of ending after a certain time. So he just like built his character up so high that he was basically going to be able to punch a man in power armor apart. <laughs> oh, it's it's great to watch. Doesn't it like turn all of his uh conversation into just intelligible grunts? Yeah, like yes. the- <laughs> And the the great thing is in the opening section the characters that know you are like do not eat it just bring it you, know, you have to tell them not to eat like a metal object mm-hmm. <laughs> oh I miss stuff like that in games yeah, yeah that's too bad that stuff kind of disappeared but yeah, and... yeah, can you imagine Arnold in like 
10, 15 years, your kids are going to start a podcast and they're about <laughs> video games. And they're going to be like, I wish things were simple like they were in my day, but my well, stupid parents I, had a resurgence. I, and everything's <laughs> hard, though. I, um, <laughs> I, I remember. Well, the thing is, we're the first generation that's really grown up with right. like real games, not just Pong or or whatever. Oh, yeah. You know, like actual complex things. And I think as they get get older, they're gonna actually go back and and look at a lot of the older stuff. I mean, at least if I have anything to say about it, because I mean, I've still got all my Super Nintendo stuff, and oh. and it it doesn't really play well with them because they're used to these basically baby games. I mean, they not, can't. not, they not, can't. not, not that they're baby games, but just that they're so, so easy. There's no challenge to it. I'm surprised that they can't handle uh, Yoshi's Island or something. Well, no, I, I, uh, I actually don't have Yoshi's Island. I oh, know. I know, I know, I know. But um, even stuff like uh, Super Mario World, you know, I mean, it, Super Mario World was got got a little challenging towards the end. But it's not like it was uh, Super Mario Brothers, you know? Right. Yeah. God, do you remember that? Uh, I remember uh, uh, that on on World 8 Level 1, there was this <laughs> jump towards the end of the level that was just one little pixel, or not a pixel, but one block that you had to be running just right. You had to jump just right, or it was done. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Ah. Uh. I don't think, uh, I don't think anyone's actually ever completed World One Three, uh, because everyone knows to take that warp pipe in One Two. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. I was. Yeah, then... I, I actually watched somebody's test video of Super Mario, uh, Let's Play of Super Mario, and I'm like, what the fuck level is this? A hidden level? And then I realized, <laughs> no, this is One Dash Four. I have never seen it. That was the so, treetop, wasn't it? Yeah, it was like the first mushroom top level yeah. ever was. So, that's with the uh, yeah, with the force scrolling to where you had to keep moving. Oh God, I hate that shit. You know if another. I... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, if I was gonna say if I didn't hit that warp pipe like uh, every time, I would just quit the game and start over. <laughs> <laughs> that was how bad my experience was in that game. I guess. I I think I, I think another positive benefit of uh, having these small indie teams making these great games is I've noticed the quality of music has gone up a lot. Yeah, that's the one thing I see everyone everyone talks about the music in every indie game. And it's almost always like Bastion. Yeah, great music Bastion in that game. had amazing music. Uh, FTL, great music. Yep. Um, Binding of Isaac, great music. Um, I mean, all these indie games, it's almost like when you have less to work with it, it less is more. Less is more. Yeah. I mean, because yeah. I mean, think of. Tell me a, a mainstream game that you that you play, and you're like, man, this music's great. What the Halo series? Uh, the Halo series has had the same music for like ten years. Well, I'm, I'm just saying, <laughs> but but it still has that. It still has good music. I'm driving a Warthog. Electric guitar theme. Well, who I mean, mistake made this song? Battlefield's always been hailed as having pretty good music. Yeah, but you only hear it during loading screens. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dun, you can dun, play the single dun, player dun, had you need to play the single player in that game. <laughs> but uh, just there's yeah, you're right. There's a lot of uh, really good music in in mainstream games. I, it's just you know what the problem is is that they all hire fucking composers like Hans Zimmer. And they're like, okay, make us a song. Fuck, why'd you do that? It's just gonna sound like every movie that came out this year now. Yeah, yeah, which it's, is it's kind generic of their idea, you know. Yeah, and, and I mean, at the risk of sounding like a hipster, um, when you don't have to appeal to 15 million people, it's a lot easier to make something that people will remember or <sighs> people will consider really good. I think I think the big difference is. They're they're making something that they like. I get the sense yeah. that they're making yeah. these games to satisfy their needs and not just we need to fulfill the market's needs. And I think that yeah. that does that does makes a world of difference in in the quality of the game, quality of music, quality of every aspect of it. Yeah, I think I think that's a pretty fair assessment. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's. I think that's going to be a thing that's going to go on for a while. Is that there's just going to be this subsection of games where it's going to be here are these unique experiences because we are a small team and we don't have to sell this game for sixty dollars and work on it for four years to uh, make it something that maybe sells enough units to recoup cost. Yeah. It's like, we're going to pump this game out in six months. It's going to be amazing. It's going to have really unique music and experience. And you guys are going to love it. And, and, and there, it, it'll find an audience a lot of the time. Yeah, like and I, I, I think you really hit on something important when you say unique exper- experience. Because, I mean, with ro- with like we were talking about roguelikes, yeah, it's a roguelike, I mean, they're, it's so varied. I mean, yes, they have the same basic uh, requirements, procedural content, um, usually two-dimensional or, or um, just uh, really lo-fi graphics, you know? Yeah. But, but they're all, not, I mean, not all, but they're unique. They, they all offer a different, uh, a different experience, you know? And I, and I think that it's, it's a different experience from modern modern shooter number 5082 yeah yeah that's it, it's just a kind of weird moment when you realize that the companies that you looked at years ago for these unique and different experiences are now just like we're going to pump out generic action shooter 900 like you're saying it, it's just like infinity ward that mm-hmm. was the studio that brought us Call of Duty that changed shooters, for better or for worse. And now they're the studio everyone vilifies for changing shooters. <laughs> <laughs> you motherfuckers keep making Call of Duty games. Well, well what do you yeah. want? They make a billion dollars every time we put one on market. We yeah. can prepackage I mean, a shit and you guys would still buy it. You, you can't really blame them. I mean, yeah. when making that kind of money, uh, yeah. I mean, it's it's yeah, it's fun to hop on the hate hate cod wagon, with, which we did last week, which we did last and a week. week before, and mm-hmm. every week because I mean, it really is pretty bland at this. I mean, it's not that it lacks polish or anything; it, it's just a bland experience. But people are willing to pay for it, so I mean, respect respect given where it, where it's due. I mean, they put out a product that people want, and I mean, that, and that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, that's you could exact. say the same thing about Battlefield, really. Yeah, and uh, actually, I mean, people they haven't have changed complained. a that much. Yeah, people have complained either way that they changed it too much, or they didn't change it enough in the last few iterations. It's kind of amazing. I I, I think that's the the problem with mass appeal, is mm. is uh, you just have people that are used to that that experience, and it's really hard to take any creative risk because. Number one, your game costs so much to make, and number two, you have to you have to sell five million units at least. You know? Oh yeah, that's that's the big thing I think is that games have become so insanely expensive to produce on a high level. Like if you're gonna start up a new franchise, you definitely have to sell a ton of units to make it a worthwhile thing to do, and. I think that's where THQ kind of went wrong, was that they, if you look at what happened to THQ, they kept launching new franchises and investing in new franchises while they weren't selling a ton for those new franchises like Homefront or anything like that. I mean, yes, that game sold, but it didn't It didn't have a lot of future to it. So you had a basically one-and-done game, and then they had to hire Crytek to make another one, which I'm sure somebody at THQ or who used to be in THQ and now is at a cardboard box is looking <laughs> at that and uh, rise and going, thank God we uh, didn't go through with that. But <laughs> So what? So what, what is rise? I haven't... It is a shitty first or third person swing a sword with the A button do executions game. Uh, it's also a launch title for the Xbox One. So yeah, I've seen the commercials. I just haven't had the motivation to actually look up what the game's about. Sure, you play this uh, guy who's it's Gaius or Marius Titus, I think is his name. <laughs> and stereotypical Roman name. Well, I was thinking it's either Gaius Marius or it's something like that. But Gaius Marius was a real guy uh, who had seven consulships in the Roman Republic. So 
that that might be where I'm going wrong there. But uh, no, you're playing this guy Marius Titus, I think, and uh, he is the titular son of Rome, which the game is called Rise, Son, son of Rome. And it's spelled with a Y, which does not normally appear in Rise, but it appears in Rise. Because it's Crytek badass it. and cute. Uh, when Crytek spells anything, there's a Y in it. Just be, <laughs> be aware. Crisis? Yeah, there's a Y in Crisis now. Fuck you guys. Uh, so, it used to be, back when it was first announced, it was a Connect only game. As wow. in Xbox 360 Connect only. And you would do everything through body motions. Whoa. And I assume somebody at Microsoft, while this was being developed, said, we need to sell a game on the next generation of consoles, and uh, you guys, could you... Here's a development kit. Can you please make a next generation game that uses the Kinect? Which um, might not have been a great idea, because during the giant bomb uh, live stream of the Xbox One uh, titles... They actually ended up using the Kinect to identify everyone in the room and identified a lamp as a guest. <laughs> I love lamp. Yeah. <laughs> but it it seems that the game did not get the greatest reviews. Um, I'd say middling to low reviews. And part of that is because it's very repetitive. So I, I finished Arkham Asylum, right? Or Arkham City. And mm-hmm. In that game, I never got tired of the combat. I never got tired of sneaking around and uh, knocking people out. Anything like that. But in this game, it appears that there's not a lot of that. It's basically, here is an arena, here are barbarians. We are not going to vary the type of guy up too much. And you hit this one button, and you can basically win the game. To execute somebody, you have to start a uh, start a quick time event. But you do not actually have to hit all the buttons in the quick time event to get the execution. Uh, wow. You don't have to hit any buttons in the quick time event to get the execution. The year of our Lord, 2013, the quick time event <laughs> reigns supreme. Well, no, you don't have to. They're optional. You just have to watch it happen. So <laughs> It's not even a quick time event. It's just an event. Yeah, it's just, it's just a cinematic at that point. <laughs> um, but it, it, it seems like it's kind of the... So when you start a new console generation... It seems that after the last one, you have to have a few things. You have to have a, a flagship first-person shooter, you have to have a racing game, and you have to have a third-person game with a lot of enemies on screen. And right now, it looks like Rise and Dead Rising are supposed to be those two games for the Xbox One. And apparently, of the two, Dead Rising is the better one. But I was not really much. surprised. I, I didn't even know Dead Rising 3 was coming out. That's because... Until... It, it a was week never or two supposed ago. to happen. Really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, From what I understand, and I've only heard what the rumors are going around, is that basically Capcom had no plans to look at the franchise again. And then Microsoft basically came in and started begging them to do it and then offered them a ton of money to make it exclusive. Hmm. So they were able to make the game. Hmm. I mean, I, I really... I've played every well at both dead risings and all the dlc i i really enjoyed them i, mean, I did too and, and i would hope that this one this one is at least successful because it's another uh it's a rare triple a game that has a kind of unique flavor to it yeah it sounds like they toned down a lot of that flavor um oh really yeah like a lot i don't want to really get too far into it because i've only seen a couple of reviews but there's some stuff like uh, the item crafting that you had to do at workbenches and all that stuff mm-hmm. in the last game. Uh, you can do that wherever you want now, which seems like a big convenience. But you're also it's also like the world of brown and gray and stuff like that. And you can call in airstrikes and <laughs> all this other stuff. Uh, uh. So it sounds, it sounds like what we're talking about, where things are just going towards the video game singularity, where they're all going to... In like five years, we're just every game we buy is going to be Call of Duty, except for <laughs> like the random indie games. So yeah, yeah, it, it's, that, that sucks. It, it sounds like it's an interesting enough game. It just doesn't sound like something to say I'm going to go spend five hundred dollars on a console, twenty five dollars so I can charge my batteries in my controller, which is a thing you have to do because the Xbox One 
uh, controller uses double A batteries in the year of our Lord 2013. <laughs> and I, I I always thought saw, thought of that as more of a uh, positive. I mean, I, I like using my rechargeable batteries just because it gives me options to use the batteries and whatever. But, yeah, but that also means that you have to spend the money on a plan plug kit, which is another twenty five dollars. Oops. Yeah. So had you want to use a wired controller to charge your controller while you played, you're out of luck. Mm. So um, what so what about PS four? PS four uses an internal battery, uh, lithium ion or something like that, similar to a cell phone. Uh reports so far are pretty good on that controller. Yeah. Uh, People are actually saying that that's the better one, but it also comes with a cable to hook it into a USB port. Nice. On, say, a computer or something, which uh, Microsoft will... uh, They didn't actually release the drivers you need to use the Xbox One controller on a PC at launch day. Of course not. So those will come later. Yeah, I've got my uh, charge-and-play kit for my 360 controller, and I tried to plug it into uh, into my computer uh, running Windows uh, 8.1. And uh, and it's just like uh, I don't know what this is. That's because like, of the charge kit. Yeah, but I'm, I mean, it, it, you would you would think eh, micro dollar sign off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it, I don't really mind. I have a wired controller. I have a I have four controllers in case people. When I bought this thing in college, people would come play with me. So now I don't have friends. So I have three controllers that go completely unused and uh, because of that I have wired controllers hanging around with the house and I was thinking of going and grabbing a controller soon because all the rubber pieces have fallen off of my Xbox 360 controllers right like all of them and yeah. they're stick drift so mm-hmm. I've, they're $60 controllers though fuck that yeah but overall it seems like the Xbox One launch had a few issues with it Whereas the PS4 launch was kind of, kind of what people expected. I I, I have I been hearing guys... reports of DOA PS4s though. Yeah, there are a few that got bricked, um, but there are Xbox One consoles that uh, there's a problem with the disc drive, and basically you cannot use that contr- uh, console and it will eat your disc. Oops, uh, yeah. the uh, 360 had that issue too. Yeah, I remember yeah. right. They did, but that was mostly because people kept trying to put them in upright, which is a really dumb idea. Yeah. Yeah, I, that, I never did that. It, it it just always seemed retarded. I, I, I did Can you that. even do the upright thing with the uh, black ones? Yeah, yeah, there are rubber footies on it. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, mine's lying on its side, which is totally fine, and probably the way it should be. Yeah. I wouldn't yeah. want to run it, but the I guess the, a lot of the problem with the people uh, with people who had discs getting eaten by the 360 were people who were switching the position of the console while the disc in the system was oh, going. Oh wow! Brilliant. Because people don't understand how fast the disc spins in that tray. Uh, they think it just sits there and the laser spins around underneath it or something. I don't know. Uh, exactly. That's how that works, right? Yep. But what? that's, uh, yeah, it, it'd be really nice if uh, they kind of got their shit together on these consoles and figured out how not to make these things eat discs and all that, but that's hardware defect rate. That's mm-hmm. going to happen no matter what. Yeah. The the only only concern I have with the uh, the consoles is that I don't, I'm not sure they're powerful enough. No, if you, that's the thing. And this is kind of the point I was making in the uh, GBS Xbox One thread where they make fun of the Xbox One, is that if you look at either of the consoles, they're glorified tablet PCs. Like, <laughs> that's what they are. That's the, the hardware power in one of these things is so low, it's not even funny. My, my 350, 3570, uh, yeah, 3570, uh, Intel four core processor is more powerful than the Xbox One by a factor of two. Like uh, it's twice as powerful. And that's as the, the Xbox last generation Xbox pro- One processor. Or PS4 PC or CPU is. That's yeah. That's Ivy Bridge, right? 
Yeah, it's an Ivy no, Bridge. No, or is that saying? No, yeah, Ivy Bridge. Yeah. If I if I went and overclocked this thing or had the overclockable version, my CPU alone would be three times as powerful as the Xbox. No, sorry, four times as powerful as the Xbox One or PS Two or Four. And I and granted, I, I know that the uh, Xbox and the PlayStation, the, any console, doesn't have all the background processes that uh, that a PC has. But <laughs> they do now. <laughs> but um, I mean, I just just looking at the numbers, I just don't see how they're gonna really push forward. Which 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 the only thing I'm concerned with as as somebody who primarily plays on PC now is that it's going to hold up development of PC games. Yeah, but those same that, arguments were made when the 360 and PS3 came out. No, that's true. That's, that's certainly and, true. And when Battlefield I mean, just, 3 came out for, P, just, for just PS3. To play, yeah. Just to play devil's advocate, I think I think that speaks to more to what's, what's possible with, with hardware optimization rather than just saying, oh, you know, fucking Tim the Toolman Taylor need more power, grunt, grunt, grunt. <laughs> like, figure out what you can do with, you know, a reasonable setup. I mean, you say, oh, they're just they're just tablet PCs. Have you seen Forza? Like, it looks yeah, fucking amazing. I've also seen literally every PC game that came out in the last five years. <laughs> have you seen Crisis Three on an ultra setting? I have, and and I'm not I'm not trying to to make that comparison, but I think it's. I think it's 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 a rash generalization to say, oh, it's just a tablet PC. Like, I'd like to see a tablet PC you buy at Best Buy run Forza, like All the right, Xbox let me, One. Let me refine my statement then. The Xbox One and PS4 both run hardware that is set up, and I mean hardware by CPU-GPU combos, set up for a tablet PC or cell phone operation. The Jaguar processors these things are based on are supposed to be uh, in, like, tablets and laptops and stuff. And then they run a dual CPU, GPU, so there's no dedicated graphics card in this thing, set up. On top of that, 8 gigs of RAM, while they're running all these OSs on top of it, right? So you're, you're now not only splitting your RAM, like, my PC has 3 gigs of RAM in the graphics card, 8 gigs of RAM going to the system. And I can run Battlefield 4 and Ultra, right? But then you say, okay, now we're going to go to the Xbox One. It has a dual combo GPU CPU. It's got eight cores, but that means absolutely nothing to us because the cores run at like 2.1 or something gigahertz. And that's kind of low, believe it or not. And yeah. then on top of it, it's got eight gigs of RAM, which is okay. That's what I have in mind, but they're splitting that between graphics and system, which is not ideal. It really sounds like they're going to bank on putting all those cores to work. I mean, if you can, and and I'm really all for that because PCs have had quad core and six core setup, eight core setups for years now. And but they, but I mean the software hasn't really touched it because there are still people with single core, dual core, and I, I'm really hoping that that we'll see more multi core uh, optimization because that'll that will uh, really basically cut down on the amount the, the on when you need to upgrade. You know, I mean it'll give your system much longer legs. Well, Which I'm, I'm hoping that they they can pull off with the with the consoles because I know the consoles have a huge influence on uh, on what happens with PC. Oh yeah, I, I mean if you look at the uh, the requirements for Bioshock and then the requirements for Bioshock Infinite, let's say. So when you bought Bioshock, if you bought a brand new graphics card for Bioshock, you could actually still run Bioshock Infinite on your PC. Which, I know that everyone says graphics cards have a shelf life of three months, but that's uh, that's kind of insane, though. It's a five-year gap. Yeah. Was it five years? This came out my senior year of college. Hmm. Released, what, earlier this year? Yeah. Yeah, Bioshock Infinite, gap. yeah. And even on 360, that was still a really pretty game. 
Yeah, no, I played it on 360, but the the texture loading stuff really bugged me. Yeah. And that's that's an engine thing. That's engines and then prioritization and then unpacking stuff, which uh, based on the size of the Xbox One's uh, discs and downloads, that's not going to be an issue when you have to unzip all these files and then paste the textures over them within the system instructions. It seems like they're not bothering to zip any files at all, and they're just putting them like right over the objects, which seems like it's helping a bit, but that's uh, that's not helping the disk size because you have a 500 gigabyte hard drive in the Xbox One that's non-detachable, and you can most of these games are really going still. To, they're still doing that pri- uh, proprietary shit. Yeah, it's internal <sighs> to the system or something now. So you can't detach it. The Sony PlayStation 4, you can detach it and put a different laptop hard drive in there whenever you feel like. Yeah, but I mean, but, you could do that with the PS3 as well. Yeah. You could do it with the 360, but you had to flash the hard drive when, yeah, it was a pain in the ass. Yeah, eventually they got smart and they said, you know what, you can use USB uh, sticks and other hard drives, but you're limited to 16 and then later 32 gigs on those. Uh they do not have that functionality out of the box on the Xbox One. So, they cut off their the amount of memory you could use on that thing. It uh, sucks it sucks for me because I was a I was a big Xbox fanboy. I got my my first Xbox in 2002 because uh Nintendo really shit the bed with the N64. And I yeah. I, I think this I think most people our age that that have a that went uh Microsoft or whatever. You mean or GameCube? Sony for that matter. Yeah, <laughs> uh, GameCube was great. Shut up. Game, uh, dude. dude I, how's the N sixty four not die. great? The N sixty four, dude. Uh, the games cost more. Um, PlayStation had so many more games. Um, N sixty four had some great games, absolutely, but they had shit when it came to third party, and it's the same problem Nintendo has now. They don't have any third-party support. Their first-party games, fantastic. Third-party games, shit. Yeah, and that's yeah, why I, I jumped ship to Microsoft when, when, it, when it came out, even though uh, GameCube, all the Zelda games, Super Smash Brothers, holy shit, I, I sank a lot of time on that. But I jumped ship and I went with Microsoft because uh, it, it catered more to what I wanted. Um, and I mean, you, Microsoft PlayStation doesn't matter because I mean, they, they more or less some exclusives here and there had had about the same experience. Yeah. Um, but I mean, uh, it, 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 like I yeah, I want to get a console. I'd like to, but it, honestly, now it's just going to basically boil down to uh, what what uh, what is going to be the best media player. <laughs> for me, more or less, because I like being able to talk to my Xbox and have it have it uh, do all this stuff. It, it it seems like a really minor thing, but it's it's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I mean, sometimes uh, I feel like I'm the only person who's actually kind of amped about that stuff. Like, no, I like I like it. I, I'd, I really I'd love do. to have like um, an all in one entertainment device. Like like when a when a show when a, when I'm watching a show on uh, Netflix. It ends, and I just say Xbox play video, and it'll play and play the next one. That, that's that's pretty cool. I mean, it, it's incredibly lazy, but I, I like it. Uh, <laughs> uh, also, it doesn't quite work yet. Uh, no, oh, it no. I mean, to to get all right. So, say you have Redbox Instant on your Xbox. If you want to get the Connect to play a video for you. Or you want and to get you're to talking about the Xbox, Red right? Box Instant. You have to say X, uh, Xbox Play Red Box Instant presented by Verizon or something really? of that nature. Yes, you have to say the full name of the app very clearly. Uh. Also, if you happen to live in, say, oh, Belgium, but you speak English primarily, uh, you're out of luck because you're only able to use the primary language of that country when you talk to your Xbox. Oh. Well, the, well, they're just they're just encouraging biling, bilingualism. No, they're encouraging. <laughs> no, that's jingoism. You think of the wrong thing. <laughs> if you're in the United States, you speak American. 
<laughs> I don't know about you. <laughs> but, you know, that's... I mean, but getting, that's, get, getting, it, It's some of the weird short-sightedness of the console that's just really off-putting. Yeah, yeah. It, it, and it seems like all the news that I hear about the console is, is stuff like that. And it, it totally discouraged me from, uh, from being an early do- adopter. Oh, yeah. I'm waiting at least until late first quarter second or early second quarter next year before i even decide if i'm gonna get either one of them yeah i mean halo is not a killer app for me <laughs> anymore you know <laughs> shouldn't be um so i mean it, my kids my kids love it but uh, i don't know i don't know it's really going to come down to what controller i like more and uh, which one is a better a better media, uh, not not server, but media, which, which whichever one's more convenient for doing, uh, like movies on TV and streaming stuff, right? And things like that. Yeah. And honestly, I'm getting a little tired of the Microsoft nickel and diming garbage too. Uh, I don't know. They've well, just the rubbed nice me wrong. The, yeah, the nice thing about the PS4 is that if that's all you wanted to do you can actually end up doing that without buying their PS Plus account. Which, which is how it should be. I mean, you, you spent uh, $500 on a console, you, you should be able to use all the, uh, all the things. I mean, yeah. I mean, I get, I get, I don't mind paying $50 a year for, for an online service. That, it's fair enough. You gotta pay, you gotta uh, maintain uh, servers and it's not free. I get it, but uh, not not mm-hmm. allowing basic access to like Netflix, which is a totally separate service. Uh, that, that's that's mm. yeah. That's that's some weird stuff. That <sighs> there's something. Uh, I think it was like BBC when they were trying to get BBC Two brought to the Xbox. There was or the Xbox 360 for their streaming stuff, similar to how they had the HBO Go app for the Xbox One, or the Xbox Which uh, I love, by the way. Yeah. Jesus, let me uh, let me drink another beer and try to explain this. So when they tried to do that, BBC actually had to back out of the deal because they found out it would be behind the Xbox One uh, paywall, as it were. And, or Jesus Christ, Xbox Live paywall, as it were. And because of that, uh, and because the BBC is not allowed to take any sort of money or be restricted by a lack of money or something of that nature, they had to back out of that deal. That, Just, and that's a shame because BBC is probably one of the uh, best news sources, m- mainstream news sources left. left. Yeah. It's just, it's just the weirdness of the situation, the way Microsoft to put the stuff behind paywalls. Um, but also they apparently have really caught on to the microtransaction thing and Forza you can grind out for 10 hours to get new cars or you can pay money to get points oh dude it's it's just like I was saying with, with Grand Theft Auto Online like you can buy for $20 20 or 25 you get 1.2 million in game GTA fun bucks yeah but does the, the, the fun bucks lock content away from you uh, like what do you mean? Like, if I want a new car in GTA and I don't have 1.2 million fun bucks, am I not going to be able to find that car in the world? At no, all? you won't. Really? Uh, well, That's some of the some of like the the supercars. Um, your only way to get access to it is to either buy it. Um, through in-game money that you either earn or that you purchase through little little cards or whatnot, like actual, real, adult money. Or someone else has bought it and you find their car on the street and they do not have it set to where only they can use their car. Like, you, you can bring up a menu and select either either everyone can get into my car, only my friends can get into my car, only my in-game crew can get into my car, or only I can get into my car. And most people just have it set to where no one can get in their car but them. Huh. So, yeah, the, you can't... A lot of, a lot of the, the high-end cars you cannot get in that game unless you grind out the money or pay for the money to buy them. 
That's fucked. Yeah. You should just be able to find them on the goddamn street. Now you can't. Now you can. You can use them in races because races are like their own different instance from the actual like free yeah. run lobby. And like if if, okay. if somebody has it set to a supercar race, you you can select the default supercars, but they may have their modded souped up supercar going against you. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I, I get that. I, I get get that. I mean, microtransactions to like save time or whatever because you don't want to grind something out but it, 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 is it shitty yeah but is it one of those things that you just kind of have to deal with now yeah I just I don't like the idea that you're in a single player game and it's like okay you can grind out this shit or you can pay us money and you can go on and it was the same thing with the plants versus zombies debacle plants versus zombies 2 debacle where it was like, okay, if you play 10 more hours, you can unlock this next area, or you can give us money right now, buy points, and then unlock this next area with those points. Yeah, like, I've uh, I played the hell out of Plants vs. Zombies 2 on, uh, on my iPad, and the thing is, um, you'd play through it, and uh, they're a little... It, it's kind of like Super Mario World, and you'd go through from point to point to point, and there are little side paths that are locked, Unless you have, uh, unless you have keys, you can get keys by grinding, or um, or you can pay. Right. And uh, I mean, it, it, but you have to play a fair bit. I mean, I've probably got maybe twenty hours total in, and I've already, and I've got everything unlocked. So right. I mean, it, it wasn't wasn't terribly painful, but it's a free game. So I mean, I, I get that. So yeah, but this is a game you paid sixty dollars for. And Wait, then, what? No, I'm saying Forza. Oh, you, oh, you Forza. can also pay yeah, yeah, fifty dollars yeah. to play Angry Birds on on Xbox One. <laughs> had you want to play a fifty dollar version of Angry Birds, but <laughs> that's I'm not making that up. That's the thing Giant Bomb bought in one of their streams. Wow, was wow. a fifty dollar version of Angry Birds Star Wars. So really, you can do that. You you pay sixty dollars. You have Forza in your hand. And you go, I'm going to go and buy this car that I liked in the last game. Then you find out that it's locked behind like four layers of content or something like that, right? So you can go, well, I can play for ten more hours with these crappy cars I don't want to use. Or I can pay money, real world dollars, to unlock the next level of cars and the next level after that and start playing. But uh, here's the thing. They have point values. So it's not a straight cash conversion. It's you buy points, right? So, the cash in that the conversion in that game is wonky because it gives you options to buy in packs, similar how you did in Microsoft Points. And if you buy the one that's highlighted as best value, which is like thirty four thousand points, right? Uh, that's actually the worst value. You're better off buying them in hundred point increments. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's really hard to affect supply and demand in a digital marketplace where everything is literally free. You're just putting money into the system so it gives you more money back in a different form. It's like Bitcoin. Oh, God, don't touch the poop. <laughs> so, You know how upset I get when I see on NPR that they're actually doing stories on Bitcoin? And I'm like, uh, don't don't offer it any sort of legitimacy. It's ah, uh, uh, it's no, it's it's a perfect, it's the perfect libertarian currency in the world, uh, because it's based on supply and demand, and the people who got in early, they and if they got out at the right time, they made their money, and all the idiots afterwards got fucked. <laughs> give it like Basically. three years it'll be absolutely amazing the price just crashes because everyone realizes they don't want to spend nine hundred dollars on a bitcoin and it's not backed by anything it's it's no, a bunch of neck beards the best the best part of it is that your if... main exchange is magic the gathering online exchange <laughs> <laughs> and you're Gats, gonna tell me with a straight face <laughs> that that this is a real currency. That'd be like me going to Chuck E. Cheese and and handing out Monopoly money, saying, "Hey, this is worth something." <laughs> okay, you have to go to Chuck E. Cheese to do this. Oh my God. <laughs> well, no, that's that's. I mean, Use this it, to get tokens. That's the only way. 
that I could have that sort of total lack of credibility. Actually, the the better the better way to put this is if you went into Chuck E. Cheese and bought all the tokens they had and then tried to cash them out like four months later when they raised the prices on arcades. Exactly. It's like, okay, you, you guys are clearly going to honor all these things, right? And they're going to go, no, you can only use them here, really. And yep. then you'll get really upset and go, well, the stupid fiat currency I purchased these in oh, is not... I love hearing the people they put on NPR like talking about like it, like you can just hear the neck beard through through the uh it's growing through, slowly oh, as every statement oh. they make oh. as an experienced sex oh. haver i know <laughs> there is i honestly internet libertarians might be the new bronies for me someone you hate just in well there's well there's a yeah. lot of overlap between the two groups so yeah, yeah. Yeah. In a perfect society run by Ron Paul, I'd be able to fuck all the horses I want. Yeah. Like, uh... Uh, this this pony is a free market capitalist, and I will spend my currency as such. Uh, <laughs> uh, and it, just like, just, uh, I don't want to. I don't want to get into politics on this. Like, like, no, this, the... is, this is this is this is this is my happy place. This is my happy place. <laughs> This is sad that this is let's, your happy place. Let's let's mo- let's move on. Yeah, right, get, get, shut up. God damn it. Uh, hate, 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 hate. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know why we can't hate on Bitcoin. It's the dumbest thing to come out of the internet since uh, it, honestly it is, but ever. but I mean if we want to go go in the politics direction, I'm I'm okay with it, but it, 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 this is a generally a uh, this is a video game. Place. Next week, Arnold finds out about anarchist capitalism. <laughs> uh, oh, that would be a bad week. We'd never stop. Uh, Have you read anything by Rothbard, Arnold? No. I suggest you do if you really want to hate libertarians. No, this guy, he's he's like the, the king neckbeard of libertarians. And he suggested that if a parent wanted to put a child or sell a child, that that would be totally fine because the parent had already put all this money into the child in terms of food, lodging, and such. Uh, if they wanted to collect like back rent on the child, it, it's basically like the market is always correct, so you can get rid of your child because he's technically an asset, not a person, because it, it, you have agency it's, over them. It's It's like... Just it, it, they don't understand that just because somebody's willing to pay something for something doesn't make it okay to sell it. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, oh hey, think I, I got all these um, hearts. I keep my in this uh, fridge. my ten year old cousin. You know what? I bet I could make a pretty penny selling her to some uh, nice Russian oil baron. You know. Yeah. Uh, but but I mean, we I we kind of that? agree as a society that you know maybe that's not the right thing to do. Yeah, well, but it's... but that's the government in, in infringing in, on on my freedoms, so yeah, Ron Paul, Ron Paul, twenty sixteen, or Rand Paul, Paul Paul, twenty sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's do that. Yeah, let's let's start that. The, the first sure the people... first presidential Honestly, campaign I, I... funded entirely by bitcoins. I think I think the big issue is Good luck. Um. That the internet has made it like where these people would have just been in their basement in the past. Um, they everybody would have just said they're crazy. Now they they can get in touch with all these other freaking crazy people, and oh, yeah. it, it lends legitimacy to their to their arguments. It's a giant echo chamber of shit. Yeah, that's kind of the issue of the internet. It's oh, it's amazing you can share ideas so fast. But what if those ideas are fucking horrifying? Yeah. yeah. Stormfront. I mean, it, it's... Prison Planet. Yep. 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 Wait. What, what's Prison Planet? Oh God! You don't know what Prison Planet is? No. 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 I don't know what that is either. I, I need you to go back to 2006 and go there. Uh, do you know who <laughs> Alex Jones is? Yes, that crazy fucker on the on on um, that I see every once in a while. On a on a news show, like he was the one that that was like going freaking crazy about uh about Second Amendment rights, right? Yeah, Alex Jones is a major conspiracy Fat theorist, asshole. Yeah. and he uh, he actually started Prison Planet, but he's like one of the best known conspiracy theorists out there now, and 
He's Fucking like constant. He's gone to like the Blinberg group meetings and stuff like that, and stood outside like I'm gonna get killed by the NWO because I'm here and I know where it is. He's one of those guys, oh, and no. uh, he started a site called Prison Planet years and years ago. That was basically like the headquarters for all sorts of conspiracies, and there it's basically a bunch of people who have no idea what science or technology is, and them just like shouting out NSA is causing autism by spying on all my phone calls. Like, no one cares. You're idiots. Yeah. But, but yeah, I mean, it, the, the problem is when people like that, who in the past would have been regarded, oh, oh hey, you're, you're, you're pretty fucking crazy. Uh, now they can meet all these other people who are, who are crazy like they are, and, they're, and oh, man, you get it. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's like it's you aren't you aren't one of the sheeple. Yeah. Oh God, that's that's the best phrase. Uh, it's basically that T-shirt you could buy a Hot Topic ten years ago that was uh, "You laugh at me because I'm different. I laugh at you because you're all the same." Yeah. Oh, it's like God. if everyone who owned that T-shirt got together on the internet and started mm-hmm. jacking each other off about how much the chemtrails hurt everyone. Uh. Like, it, it's just so absolutely insane. But. The worst people out of that entire thing are, of course, the uh, men's rights activists. <laughs> those guys are. Uh, we really have to touch on them. <laughs> Fuck God, those you're going to give me a. Ooh, I'm not touching any of them. If you don't touch them, they'll get really angry. That's the problem. If you problem. don't touch yeah. them, they'll touch <laughs> you. Yeah, I married you. Know you. you I were own you. for it because you look too good. Yeah. <laughs> it's God, just the bio truth. truth. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God, those people! So, uh, you think we've uh, we covered video games for a little while on this podcast, even? Uh, but you know what? I think that it's probably time we end this one. How you guys feel? Yeah, yeah. You know, before we before we get into before we get MRAs. Yeah, Arnold's just gonna <laughs> sit in a bathtub with a toaster for a little while, get nice and warm. Yeah. <laughs> so fuck, he's gonna talk to me about bronies next week. Uh, uh, so yes, next week I'm sure we'll find other topics. Maybe I'll get some information correct about the Xbox One next week. I'm sure there were a bunch of things that I got wrong. Might have been tracks instead of cars. Who knows? But still, microtransactions within a game is kind of an insane thing. So. With that in mind, I've been Lazy Fire, uh, had Arnold here, mm. Three Toes was also available for this. Kind of. It, yeah, see? <laughs> Thanks for showing up, Three Toes. Anytime. <laughs> and uh, this is the Hate the Player podcast. Roll time! Anyone, fucking have anything quit. they want to say? No. Oh, <laughs> no, Arnold, Three Toes, oh, nothing to roll say. T- roll Tide. Roll Tide. Uh, just <laughs> fuck. <laughs>